Hey everybody and welcome back to the Age For Me podcast. And today I am sharing something with you guys that's really special, a really special project for me. And I'm entitling this one uh, Bible Bedtime Stories for Zadie. And uh, Zadie is my stepdaughter that will be arriving soon to our house to live with us. Um, And I'm very excited about that. But this is something that I wanted to be able to give to her so she could um, learn the Bible. I don't know if she was already taught it previously. But as a woman, it is our responsibility to explain the Bible and teach the laws of God to our children. And that's what my purpose is behind this. So this is my first episode, and I'm just thankful and blessed to be able to share this with you guys. So without any further further ado, we're going to read the story of the creation. Uh, I'm reading it out of uh, the Bible Stories app. Uh, So please forgive me if some of the words are not completely accurate, and I will uh, break it down. We have a King James Version uh, Bible. If something uh, doesn't fit right or doesn't sound right, um, to compare it to. So this story you can find in Genesis chapter 1 and 1 to Genesis 2 and 7. Uh, This great world in which we live did not always exist. The broad expanse of the sky which smiles upon us when days are fair and frowns and weeps when days are foul didn't did not always form an arch above the earth hung. Long, long ago there was no world at all. There was no sun to shine, there was no stars to twinkle, nor no moonbeams to play through the night the night shadow but even then there was God for he never has been and always shall be in the same unchanging divine being then way back in that long ago at the very beginning of time God made the world not as we see it today for at first the water covered everything and all was darkness everywhere. With a strange, unfriendly world, this might have been, for no living creature could dwell in it. But God planned to make it beautiful so he could cause the light to shine. So he caused the light to shine. This light he called day, and the darkness he called night. And then the evening and morning of the first day of time passed by. On the second day, God made the beautiful sky and placed above the water covered the water covered earth clouds to carry the sky's moisture. He called the sky heaven, and on the third day, <clears throat> he caused the waters to flow to get together in wide, deep places, and he called them seas. Dry land then rose up, and he called earth. And this he called them. But as yet there were no were no grass, flowers, nor trees. The whole earth was barren and desolate. So God caused a carpet of grass to grow upon the bare ground, and beautiful flowers to spring up from earth. The trees and the herbs also he made to grow at his will. When God beheld all these things, he saw that they were good. On the fourth day appeared the great lights which we see in the sky, the sun, and the moon, and the stars. These he made to divide the day from night. After these things were made, God began to create living creatures. He made fish of all kinds and sizes to swim about in the sea and the birds of every description to fly about above the water and land, just as we see them doing today. Thus the world continued to become more beautiful, and the fifth day of the week of time passed by. On the sixth day, God made all the animals, great and small, and every creeping thing. Then 
there were was life abounding in the woods and on the plains, as well as the air and in the sea. What a beautiful world. Still, what a strange world, for there were no people in it. Not a home anywhere, not a man, a woman, nor a child to be seen. What a very strange world indeed. But God had not yet finished his work of creation, for he wished to have people live in the wonderful world he had made. They could enjoy it, beauty, and take care of it as no other living creature could do. And more, they could know who had made all these great things. And knowing God, they could love and worship him. So it was it was that God made the first man out of the dust of the ground. He made the man's body and he breathed into that body with the breath of life. And man became a living soul. This first man God called Adam. And to Adam he gave the power to rule over all the other living creatures. These animals and birds he brought to Adam, and Adam gave each of them a name. But not one of them did Adam find suitable for a helper. And because he needed a helper very much, God made for him a woman. This woman became Adam's wife, and he loved her very much, and he called her Eve. When the sixth day ended, God made the world and had placed everything in it just as he wished. Therefore, on the seventh day, he rested from his work. The end. So that is the end of our first Bible story. And tune in next time and we will go on with another one. I just want to let you know that understanding and reading the Bible is something that we all should uh, try to develop try to develop a relationship with God and figure out who we are you know and what direction are we going and also build up our faith so we're not so stressed out and moved by our emotions when you have a higher power or something that's in your life uh, that you can believe in and, and, and put your rest of your faith in it takes a lot of pressure off of you. I, I, uh, I have a sister, and she, I, I, I always tell her, I say, you, you always stress it. You know, she bought a gun. <laughs> she started her own business. You know, and she t- she tells me all the time, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I said, for for a person that that's part that's purchased her own gun, and a person that started her own business at at uh, under 25. I said, that's not things that scary people do. <laughs> I said, what you, I said, you lack faith. I say, so what, what you're afraid of is the unknown. But fear is, is false evidence appearing real. There is nothing to fear if you believe and have faith in God. Period. Because he created us. He created everything on this earth. And nothing will come, will come harm to you unless he allows that. Period. So. When you have a different perspective, you learn to move a certain way and you learn your place on this earth and, and just it, it, it brings you peace in the spirit and it helps you to be confident and make good decisions and set yourself up for a, a great life. So, uh, like I said, thanks. Make sure you check me out on Queen from Creation. Uh, if you have any questions, queenforcreation at gmail.com is my email. You can always reach me. Um, and you can also check me out on YouTube, um, Queen Minded. I've been, I have about 100 videos on YouTube uh, talking about various topics and things. So guys, tune in and check me out. And thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great one. Zadie, this is part two of your bedtime story. 
I just want to say that it has been an honor and a pleasure to get to know you over these last few uh, years, you know, because due to the circumstances, you know, uh, we've only been able to talk every now and then. So, you know, it's, I'm not happy about the situation that I currently see you in. I feel like they could be doing better with you and what they're doing. I mean, you're a beautiful lady, little young lady and you have a lot of potential. And I know that you've had a very hard life and I know it's going to be hard in the future for you to trust people, right? And it's okay that you don't trust people in the beginning, but you also need to learn who to trust and who not to trust. <clears throat> and when you've... Uh, you can't always believe everything that you hear. You have to learn to be have a discernment about people and learn to judge people based on their character and who they present themselves to you, who they are. You know, we have to give people the benefit of the doubt and not be judgmental. But we also have to understand our place in this world and how people perceive People's perception and how they perceive you is going to determine how far you're able to go in this world. You know, I know you think that <laughs> this, is, this is like, this is an illusion. It's not real. You know, we all fall into some category in life. And uh, regardless to what category in life you decide to fall into, know that you have to learn to trust people and judge them on how they treat you. You cannot allow yourself to be manipulated by people's words because the mouth will say anything and actions speak louder than words. People show you who they are and you have to be able to discern the good people from the bad people, you know? And you know, you like I said, I'm not happy with how they're how you're growing. I feel like if you were here with us, you should have been here with us a long time ago. You know, but I feel like I would have you cooking by now, you know, and you would have a lot more happiness than what you currently have and what we see. But we are not gonna give up on you. You know, we still hanging in there and when the time is right, it's going to be all good. And, you know, just know that we love you and we are going to be here fighting for you till the end. And nothing that they can do is going to ever change that. So I just want you to know that, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to love me, you know, because I know I'm not your mom or anything. But, you know, I love you. And it ain't nothing that you can do that's going to change that. So, you know, I fucks with you until you don't fuck. You you, you won't have to not fuck with me because I'm always fucks with you. That's just part of the package deal because I love your father. You know, because I love your father, you just get an automatic pass to my heart to a certain extent. I ain't going to be your sucker now. But I will love you to the best of my ability, you know. So, I know it's only going to be a matter of time before we together and we can kick it and chill. Sit out here on the porch and catch up. And, uh, you know, I look forward to that day. And I will come back and say something else another time. But I just wanted to let you know I was thinking about you. And I do love you. And I can't wait for you to be here with us. It's going to be great. Shalom. Thank you.